What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Darth Previews, aka the COVID King, flu game Dan, West Sydney's finest, drippier than a hotel shower, repping the Charlotte Hornets today. I've got some picks and leans to get through to you. I'll be sharing my screen, I'll be sharing Outlier, I'll take you through all the leans that I have for tomorrow's slate. I'll even share my high value single bets that I'm thinking about taking. And if that sounds interesting, let's go. All right, we're kicking things off with the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Washington Wizards. Believe it or not, LeBron James and Anthony Davis are not game time decisions in the, in this one. It's amazing. It must be Christmas. Vanderbilt, Gabe Vincent, Cam Reddish, Kyle Kuzma, Marvin Bagley, Rashawn Holmes, Tyus Jones, Landry Shamet, all game time decisions in this one. But the most important thing is LeBron James and Anthony Davis are going to be playing. We know that for sure. So um, I've already scanned the board. I've got a few players that I'm considering at the moment. I'm going to take you through those. I'll research those a little bit further. And if I find a reason not to bet it, I won't. But if I don't find a reason not to bet it, you know you're going to be seeing these bets in the pinned comments. So the first one we're looking at today is LeBron James. So I like this prop right here. Seven and a half assists. Um Firstly, the hit rate is impeccable. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games, averaging 8.7 assists. In his last 20 games, he's covered this line 17 times, averaging 9.2 assists. In head-to-head -head matchups, he's covered in his last two versus the Washington Wizards. Um, he versed them a month ago, had nine assists in that game. So that wasn't overtime, though. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a free bet at all. And with a line projected of 13 points, the Lakers are favorites in this one. Chances are it doesn't go into overtime as well. But he's got a good matchup here against Washington. Washington as a team give up the second most assists to small forwards. They give up the 10th the most assists. Um, LeBron, can he can rack up these assists on anybody. So I do like this. Uh, obviously, the sports books are predicting that he goes over. The, lines, the odds that we're seeing here at minus 125, but I promise you, if you do some line shopping, you'll find better odds than that. But yeah, I'll be researching that a little bit further. I haven't found a reason yet not to take it. So I'll keep digging. And if I find something I don't like about it, then I won't. But chances are you're going to see LeBron James in the thumbnail and also in one of the pin comments as well. So LeBron James, I do like that play. Another play that I do like is for Rui Hachimura. And I don't mind this first quarter prop here for Rui. So that line is at two and a half points in the first quarter. His matchup, it's not too bad. Uh, one of the more difficult ones, you could say, but we're up the two and a half points here for Rui. Now, he's covered this in eight of his last 10 games, five out of his last five, and in his last 20 games, he's covered this in 16 of his last 20 games. He's only had four games where he hasn't scored more than two and a half points. In head-to-head -head matchups, that was one of the games where he didn't score. Uh, he only scored two points in his last matchup against Washington in the first quarter, but um, I'm going to dive into this. I'm going to see what his activity looks like. If he's taking at least, if it's more than two field goals in the first quarter, um, I might feel comfortable taking it. Uh, he's obviously making a three-pointer in these. Uh, I don't mind this at all for Rui Hachimura, but that's something that I'm going to be looking into. There's no plays on the Washington Wizards because I don't know who the hell is going to be playing, but... Jumping over to the high value single bet now, I'm thinking of taking Anthony Davis and I'm looking at his points prop here. And I'm not just looking at his regular over of 24 and a half because that's not exciting anybody. What I'm thinking about is taking Anthony Davis at 30 points. So if you're looking at over 29 and a half points, you're getting odds of about plus 250, which is what I like if I'm going to play half a unit on it. Now, AD, he's covered this in only two of his last 10, four of his last 20. Those four games, Utah Jazz, the Washington Wizards, the Indiana Pacers, and the Milwaukee Bucks. So a few of these games went to OT in order for him to cover. Two of them. Two of those four games did go to OT. But we know that the matchup is great here. The Wizards have nothing inside. Especially if Bagley and Holmes, they don't play. They have nothing. On the interior, Anthony Davis should be eating all day. You look at his head-to-head -head matchups, last two games against the Washington Wizards, 55 points and 40 points. His last two games against them, we're only asking for 30 points here. I might even ladder it up to 35 as well, plus 700 odds for that one. So uh, that's one that I'm considering. This is the type of form line I saw when I took Devin Booker to score 50, pretty much the same. It's like he hadn't been doing it well at all as of, 
in his recent form, but historically he's made it happen against these teams. This Wizards team hasn't got any better. Anthony Davis to have a big game. I'm considering taking that as well. Moving into the next game, it's the Portland Trailblazers versus the Charlotte Hornets. Now, I've got a few leans in this game, actually. Let's talk about it. So the first one I'm looking at is... I'm looking at Jabari Walker. And I'm looking at his assist prop and his rebounds plus assist prop. And the reason why is given the number of outs that they have, there's Jeremy Grant, game time decision, but probably won't play. Uh, Minaya, Brogdon, Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons, Matisse Thibel, game time decision. Oh, they're out. And for the Hornets, Brendan Miller, Bridges, Grant Williams, Michik, they're all game time decisions as well. Uh, the line in this game is Charlotte minus one. So chances are it's a very close game. Jabari Walker has seen an uplift in his minutes as of late. Let's just look at his assist prop as an example, and let me show you. So his last two games, he's played 34.5 and 40 minutes, which is huge, right? In those games, he covered his assist line very easily. Um, let's assume that Jabari Walker is going to get a similar number of game time. Jabari Walker, when he plays more than 30 minutes, 31 minutes, he's covered this assist prop in eight of his games this season when he gets to play at least 30 minutes. He does have a good matchup here. The Charlotte Hornets allow the six most assist to power forwards on the season. Now, Jabari Walker is not averaging a high volume of potential assists, though. Uh, last two games, four potential assists in both of those games, but that's more than enough to cover one and a half as a line. When I did the same um, type of filters, when I looked at his rebound prop as well, check this out. So looking at his rebound prop of eight and a half, you can see that he's covered this line in eight out of his last nine games when he plays at least 31 minutes. So averaging 10.2 rebounds per game. Given that I do like both, instead of taking two different bets, I figured, what if we just took his rebounds plus assists? Over 10.5 rebounds plus assists. We apply the same filter where he plays at least 30 minutes a night, and he's covered this in nine out of his last 10 games. Does an excellent matchup for his assists. The rebounds matchup is not overly difficult. He's yet to verse this opposition, but yeah, I'm not minding that at all. Um, the only thing I'm considering at the moment is do we probably take just the assist prop? Because if Miles Bridges is playing, it could be a tough cover for Jabari Walker, especially given the amount that Miles Bridges shoots the ball. If Jabari Walker is going to be the one that picks him up, uh, chances are he's not going to be in position to rebound. So um, I'm thinking, do I go rebounds plus assists because this does look great? Or do I just take the assists and sweat my balls off? Because, yeah, he's got a good hit rate when he plays 30 minutes, eight of his last 10. But in four of these games, he just finished right on two assists, and the odds aren't great either. So that's one thing I need to work through in my mind. The other player that I'm looking at, though, is DeAndre Aiden. So DeAndre Aiden has an excellent matchup here against the Charlotte Hornets. I'm looking at two different players for DeAndre Aiden. One is his first quarter points prop, and it's not the under. I'm looking at the over. So for DeAndre Aiden to get over six and a half points. Firstly, the Charlotte Hornets allow the third most points to centers on the season. DeAndre Aiden has covered this line in six out of his last 10, which isn't amazing. But if you look at the games where he's gone under, Miami Heat, they're one of the toughest teams to score for big men. The Boston Celtics, that's a tough matchup as well. The New York Knicks, that's a tough matchup. And the Clippers, that's a tough matchup as well. This matchup is one of the easiest matchups he's going to see. Um, very comparable with your teams like Toronto, who don't have a true center. The Pelicans, that's an easy matchup, and he killed them. Miami and Orlando, they're difficult matchups too, and he still managed to make it happen. So uh, DeAndre Ayton over his points prop, I don't mind that. And if we look at his last matchup with Charlotte, that was a very low-scoring game. He still managed to score eight points playing 10 minutes in the first quarter. So that's one play that I am considering for DeAndre Aiden. He's not carrying any injury, which I love. But the other prop I'm looking at is his rebound prop, over 12 and a half rebounds for DeAndre Aiden. Now the Charlotte Hornets allow the fifth most rebounds to centers on the season. Now Aiden hasn't rebounded very well in his last three. Well, he has, but he hasn't covered this line in three straight. 12 rebounds in the last game against Orlando is a pretty good effort. Um, the two games where he went under against the Clippers in Miami, he only played 26 and 24 minutes. Both of these games were blowout losses. In Like I said earlier, it's a one-point spread in this game, so chances are we don't see a blowout. And if we don't see a blowout, DeAndre Aiden should play at least, what, 
32 minutes, I'd say, 33 minutes. So if we fucked around with the filters there and we just go for DeAndre Aid when he plays at least 30, he's now hit this in seven out of his last 10. We factor in that he's got a very easy matchup here against the Charlotte Hornets. The last time he played them, he had 19 rebounds. Now, this was a very low-scoring game. I don't believe it would be that low-scoring, but both of these teams, offense isn't great. There should be a lot of rebound opportunities here for DeAndre Ayton, especially if it's someone like Nick Richards on the floor. He's not going to spread the floor at all. DeAndre Ayton should be in good rebounding position all night. So that's another play that I do like in this game, DeAndre Ayton, to go over. 12 and a half rebounds. Now let's jump into the next game. It's the Boston Celtics versus the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now SGA and Jalen Williams, I think they're game time decisions as well as Jalen Brown. Um, so not as many markets available at the moment, but there's enough for me to take some leans here. So the very first one I'm taking my look at like here, Derek White. So the first pick that I'm liking is his first quarter points prop. Now, the odds are at minus 145, but if you do some line shopping, you can definitely find some value in it. I had a quick look at it earlier, and I was able to find him for minus 120. So you've got to do a little bit of line shopping, find some value. If you don't find the value, you don't take the bet. Simple as that. But Derek White, he's covered this line of two and a half points in eight out of his last 10 games. In his last 20, he's covered this 14 times. He's got a great matchup here. The OKC Thunder allow the third most points to shooting guards on the season. So we like that. In head-to-head -head matchups, he's covered this in two out of his last three games against OKC, scoring three points. In those games, only playing 6.4 minutes in the first quarter. Over his last 10 games, he's playing 8.3 minutes. So he's getting a slight uplift. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to take this bet. The one thing I do want to look at is volume. And for someone with a line of two, two and a half points, I'd be looking to see at least three shot attempts per game. If I can see an average of three shot attempts per game, and if Jalen Brown is ruled out, even better. So Derek White, don't mind that. I also don't mind his full points prop. It's 15 and a half. It does seem about right, but he has covered this in seven of his last 10 games. Uh, six out of his last seven, the game he fell under against the Pelicans, he finished on 15 points. So... Um, I don't mind what we're seeing for Derek White. This line has increased. It used to be at 13 and a half just a couple of games ago. It's now up to 15 and a half, probably given his good matchup and the recent form. To head matchups, he's covered in two of his last three, scored 19 points the last game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. So, yeah, I don't mind this for Derek White. This is a home game for the Boston Celtics. We look at his last few home games, four of his last 10 home games, but uh, so it's not overly impressive. So I'm still a bit on the fence about it. The matchup is good. Uh, we also don't know if Jalen Brown's going to play or not. It might be a good option to take it now before Jalen Brown um, does get ruled out if he does. So we can see his, these are his games without Jalen Brown. He's covered in seven out of his last eight games with Jalen Brown out of the lineup. So yeah, if Jalen Brown doesn't play and we get on we're laughing but if we don't get on and we wait till the announcements made this line's most likely going to move up you know what i'm saying so yeah so i'm about just taking the bet now in bet 365 and potentially cashing out depending if jalen brown plays or not so that's a couple of leans on Derek white Other than that the only other props i'm looking at are some first quarter props in this game so I'm looking at Kristaps Porzingis, and I'm looking at his first quarter points prop. So even though my first quarter points prop on Michael Porter Jr. let us down today, shot one for five, believe it or not, um, it's still a bet that I'll take every single time. Now, Kristaps Porzingis, his line's at six and a half. Normally, sometimes you can find this at five and a half, believe it or not. And whenever I see it at five and a half, I take it every single time. I'm having a quick look at bet 365 at the moment, and it's right on six and a half. So um, still not a bad bet. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10 games, 14 of his last 20 games. Uh, the matchup, it's not a bad one here against Chet. His last matchup against OKC, he scored 12 points in the first quarter. So um, I am loving that. The other play that I'm looking at, sticking on the first quarter, is I'm looking at him to score 10 points in the first quarter. And that is $3.50 is what I can find on my sports book. That's plus $2.50. But Outliers telling us there's odds there in the US for about plus $2.10. So um, pretty good odds here for Chris Ups to go over 9.5. And, 
He has cashed that in four out of his last 10 games, and he's cashed it the last time he played against OKC. I don't mind that for Chris Stubbs. Maybe put a half unit on that. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, the other first quarter prop I'm thinking of playing is to fade SGA. Now, I said it last time he played to consider fading him against the New York Knicks. The line was at eight and a half. I didn't take it. He only scored two points. So he's clearly trending down. Um, the under eight and a half is minus 108 as well. So he's gone under in six consecutive games now. It's still a game time decision, obviously. So he's still hampered by this injury. This is a game that they're most likely going to lose. So do they risk him or is it very important for them to maintain their spot in the standing so they have to win every game here on out? I'm not too sure. But if SGA does play, I know he has a good matchup, but and he's like scored well against them in the past, 12 and 11 points in his last two games against Boston in the first quarter. Just this recent form and knowing that he's injured, eight and a half points is a lot. So um, that's something that I'm leaning on as well. All right, we're jumping to the next game. It's the Atlanta Hawks versus the Detroit Pistons. Um, when I saw these teams were matching up, I already knew who I was going to take a bet on. In terms of the injury lists, we've got Cade Cunningham, Sasa, Taj Gibson as game time decisions. No game time decisions for the Atlanta Hawks. Jalen Johnson, he's played, been back for a full game now, uh, fully healthy, ready to go. And in this particular game, I'm looking at Cade Cunningham over his rebounds and assists. Now, something I think in one of the live streams the other day when I was on the watch party or something, like somebody was asking, you know, well, who's been your most profitable bet, most profitable player to bet on so far this season? And after thinking it through, it was Cade Cunningham, to be honest. So, um, and I've been betting, it's probably this exact prop to, it's not his, re, his rebounds and assists is pre- fairly recent. Prior to that, it was points plus assists. But his rebound assist has been serving me very well. So check this out. The line at 11 and a half. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games. He's got a great matchup for rebounds and assists. The Hawks are the fifth most rebounds and the fourth most assists to point guards on the season. So Cade's hit this in eight of his last 10. He's hit this in four consecutive games against the Atlanta Hawks, averaging 14 and a half rebounds and assists. So over his last 20, he's hit this 15 times. So um, a really positive play here. I know that he's a game time decision, but he has been for you know a lot of these games as of late, and he's been delivering like crazy. Um, went under against Minnesota, absolutely struggled. I uh, get that. Still played 28 minutes, but that Minnesota Timberwolves matchup is a tough one for rebounds and assists. And then he also had the Toronto Raptor matchup. That was just disappointing because that's a great matchup for his assists. Didn't need to make it happen. Probably scored 100 points. So, yeah, Cade Cunningham, rebounds plus assists. I almost bet that instantly. I've looked at this prop that many times. I have a good understanding of what's going on. So I'm fairly certain I'm going to take that bet, especially at these odds at minus 110. Just trying to see if there's anything else in this game that I didn't mind. Actually, there's another Cade Cunningham prop. Let me get back into Cade. So what I'm thinking of taking for some high-value singles here, I'm thinking of taking his points prop. I'm thinking of taking him over 29 and a half and over 34 and a half. So 30 and 35 points is what I'm thinking about at the moment for Cade Cunningham. Now, why is that? Well, firstly, his recent form is arousing, right? Last three games, scored 32, 33, and 36 points. He's up against the Atlanta Hawks, who allow the third most points overall this season. We look at how they defend point guards. They are the worst. They allow the most points to point guards that more compared to any other team in the NBA. Cade Cunningham walks into the best matchup in basketball for him to score some points with some hot form with three games scoring 30 plus points in head to head matchups. He's covered 35 and 43 points in his last four games. He's covered that twice. So um, the recent form is absolutely excellent. And if it's going to be a, high scoring high paced game Kate Cunningham's going to eat so he'll get his rebounds he'll get his assists but there's a chance that he can blow up when it comes to scoring so I'm not willing to take his normal over whatever that is what is it 24 and a half perhaps 24 and a half points is his line um because the hit rate doesn't really change he's either killing it or he's not he's not hitting it at all so Let's take the 30, take the 35, maybe put a half unit on each, see where we land uh, for Cade Cunningham. So, yeah, that's another bet that I'm thinking about. 
Uh, for these Atlanta Hawks, there's nothing on there that I'm liking, nothing from the Atlanta Hawks players. I did consider Clint Capella over one and a half uh, blocks because he has been hitting that extremely well as of late. Um, but, yeah, I'm not really feeling it, to be honest. Where is he? Clint Capella blocks. See, he's hit this in five consecutive games now. That's pretty crazy. Eight of his last 10, five consecutive games, and he's hit it in six consecutive games against the Detroit Pistons. So, yeah, I was strongly considering it. He's got a good matchup too. The Pistons get allowed the second most blocks to centers on the season. You know what? Fuck it. I just talked myself into it. Clint Capella, you're going back on the list, my boy. All right, so I've got, <clears throat> all right, so I've got someone from the Atlanta Hawks on my bet slip. Now, the next one is the Indiana Pacers versus the Brooklyn Nets. So these guys just played each other not too long ago. It might have been two days ago or something. We've got Miles Turner as a game-time decision. Sprained his finger in that last game. We took his under in his rebounds, and thanks to that sprained finger, we cashed. I've already scanned the board. There's nothing that I really love in this game when it comes to player props. I also don't like the fact that they just played each other as well. So a lot of weird shit can happen when that occurs. So, yeah, there's nothing in this game that really got my attention. If you want to know more about the player props in this game, Sign up to Outlier, free seven-day trial. Fuck around with it. And if it doesn't suit you, then just don't pay for it. It's as simple as that. So the next game is the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Dame is a game-time decision, as well as Pat Beverly, Galloway. Conchar still a game-time decision, but most likely won't play for the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, looking through this game, there's nothing I really loved when it came to a single bet and whether I was willing to play anything on it. The one play that I am considering taking, though, is a, a play on Giannis. And let me take you through it. I'm actually just thinking of just putting a small amount of money here on him to get 10 assists. I know Dame's coming back, but check this out. So Giannis has covered, has had 10 assists in four out of his last 10 games, which is pretty good. Uh, the matchup for Giannis, it's a difficult one when it comes to assists. Um, but in head-to-head -head matchups, he did have 12 assists the last time he played the Memphis Grizzlies. So they'll do everything they can to stop him from getting into the paint. They'll force him to kick it out. If Dame's in, there's another good shooter. We've got Beasley, Middleton, Brook Lopez. Four shooters around Giannis. Um, if the Bucs are absolutely singing, which they need to be because they're dropping games to shit teams at the moment, uh, Giannis and the Bucs need to be firing. So I think, like, he's hit this in four of his last 10 games. We're getting uh, plus 270 on this one. Um, probably a little bit higher if you do some line shopping, but... Yeah, it's something that I don't mind. It's going to be a very small play if I do take it. But outside of that, I didn't find anything in terms of a single bet that really got my attention in this one. Up into the next one, it's the Orlando Magic versus the New Orleans Pelicans. And I'm just going to run back what I have been playing, really, because it's been working for me for the most part. So I've got at least four to, four to five different plays in this one I'm considering. The very first play that I'm looking at, though, um, is... I'm looking at Jonas Valanciunas and taking his under in his PRA, under 19 and a half. Firstly, he's gone under in nine of his last 10 games, 14 of his last 20. So his last 10 game stretch, he's been appalling. Well, it's not that he's been bad. He's just not getting minutes, right? His minutes are going down every single week, like he's aging before our eyes. 18.7 minutes a night. Um, so nine of his last 10, he's only averaging 15.7 points, rebounds and assists. In head-to-head -head matchups, he's gone under in his last two games against the Orlando Magic. And in those games, he played 23 and 18 minutes. That's the type of minutes he has been getting as of late. In terms of the matchup against Orlando, it's a tough one. They allow the fourth fewest points, the third fewest rebounds, and the third fewest assists to centers on the season. The Orlando Magic also could go small. And not necessarily uh, small in height. They can go long, but they can get mobile with it. So... Jonathan Isaac is a big, long motherfucker off the bench, but he's a three or a four, but they can move him to the five in, in space and they can play fast. If the opposition plays fast, Valanciunas will not be on the court. They can't have Valanciunas and Zion on the court at the same time, and the other team's going to push the pace in your ass. So that's partly why we're seeing Jonas play, get limited game time, um, and I don't mind the under in this one, especially, you know, he burnt me a couple of weeks ago, took his over for something, and he only played 10 minutes in that game unbelievable it was this one here against okc motherfucker so hopefully that happens he gets played off the court only gets 10 minutes and we cash this under sweat free 
Um, the other player that I'm considering is one that I've been writing for quite some time now. It's nothing crazy, but it's Trey Murphy to go over five and a half rebounds. So check this out. Nine of his last 10 games, he's hit it in six consecutive games. The matchup is not the best matchup here against the Magic, who's a good def- uh, good rebounding team. Um, but Trey Murphy does a lot of his work on the defensive end, meaning he gets a lot of defensive rebounds. So 87% of his rebounds in the last 10 games have been on the defensive side of things. So he's not going to crash the offensive boards anyway. So as well as Orlando rebound the ball, I don't think it's going to impact someone like Trey Murphy that much. I feel like it would probably impact someone like Jonas Valanciunas and maybe Zion a lot more. So I do like the rebound prop here for Trey Murphy, especially at five and a half odds. He's been in a lot of game time with no Brandon Ingram in the lineup. You can see it in his minutes here. Four consecutive games now. You've seen a big lift in his minutes. Didn't get as much against Phoenix last time, but obviously that was a blowout loss. So if he gets over 35 minutes here, I really like the opportunity for him to get six plus rebounds. The other player that I don't mind for Trey Murphy, we're looking at his first quarter rebound. So I previewed this last time I did the video when they played, and I said, look, I don't mind taking it, but he has been just finishing on two rebounds a lot, and it's the trend continues. He's hit this in nine consecutive games where he's had two rebounds in the first quarter up against the Orlando Magic in the past. Did have two rebounds against him in the first quarter. And in that particular game, the Pelicans lost by 15 points. So the Pelicans are five-point favorites in this one. You'd assume that means they play better. The Orlando Magic should miss more shots and give Trey Murphy more opportunities. And at this for plus 100, shit, I don't mind it. So there's two leans on Trey Murphy to get some boards that I don't mind. Uh, the next player I wanted to look through is CJ McCollum. So I want to look at CJ McCollum's first quarter points in this one. I think the line's at four and a half. Yes, it is. So CJ McCollum lines at four and a half. He's got a in terms of where the Orlando Magic are weak defensively, it's point guards and small forwards. Outside of that, they're pretty good. CJ McCollum does have a good matchup in this one, I'd say. Um, he's covered in eight out of his last 10 games. He's covered this four and a half points. And in head-to-head matchups, he's covered in two out of his last three. One of the games he went under only scored four points in the first quarter. Now, CJ McCollum is very busy in that first quarter. He takes a lot of shots. Sometimes that percentage just isn't there. I've seen him shoot zero for seven many times in the last couple of weeks, but he always seems to finish games off quite well. That's why his points prop has probably been a more consistent one, but I don't mind this first quarter play for CJ McCollum. I don't love his overall points prop, 21 and a half. I did have a pretty poor game against Phoenix, and what we're seeing late in the game, they tend to be going to Zion all day. CJ McCollum not cutting it at the moment. So that's one play. One that I was considering, and the numbers aren't the aren't the strongest. They're not going to pop off your screen, but I'm looking at Herb Jones' points because since um, Brandon Ingram's been out, Herb Jones we've seen a kind of an uplift in his scoring. Um, but I think the line's just about right, to be honest. At ten and a half, uh, he does have a a good matchup. You would say at the three, he'll probably get the worst defender defending him. Um, Scored 13 points the last time they played the Orlando Magic, so that's a positive sign as well. But that could be a very sweaty bet because he just doesn't shoot the ball that much. So if you can catch him taking a lot more shots, happy days for you. Uh, Who else was there? I think it was Gary Harris. Gary Harris. Let me check you out, my boy. Here he is. So Gary Harris, first quarter props. If you've been living under a rock, this guy hits this almost all the time, if you like it. So his line's at two and a half. He's covered this in eight out of his last 10 games. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered it in his last two against the Pelicans, scoring six and five points. Um, but, yeah, it's just got a great hit rate. I'm just a bit worried about his volume because it's really dependent on him making a three-pointer or not. But sometimes he takes more than one shot. What I'm thinking of playing instead is potentially him to get over four and a half points, so to score five. Now, that reduces it down to two in his last 10 games, but he has hit that in his last two games against the Pelicans. Um, but the odds for that are, are pretty juicy. Um, I can't find that here on Outlier. I'd have to do some line shopping on Bet365, but I'm considering taking Gary Harris for over four and a half points in that first quarter. Um, he'll be the person that they leave open out of everybody. He'll probably have CJ McCollum defending him, to be honest. So uh, easiest matchup for Gary Harris in that first quarter for sure. 
All right, jumping into the next game, it's the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Toronto Raptors. So Emmanuel quickly, RJ Barrett successfully made their return today and they played quite well. Gary Trent Jr. is a game-time decision, as well as Agbaji, Brown, and Carton as well. So they could have some more troops coming back. None of their top-line players, but more players nonetheless. Uh, I'm only really looking at one play in this game. Like I did consider Rudy rebounds, but his line is so high at the moment. Um, and there is a blowout potential. Minnesota, 15.5 point favorites in this game. The play that I'm actually considering taking, though, is this one. It's Anthony Edwards under 8.5 points in the first quarter. Now he does have a pretty good matchup here against the Raptors, but he's gone under in 8 out of his last 10 games. He's gone under in 14 of his last 20 games and one of his last two. He did score 12 points in the first quarter in the last game against the Toronto Raptors, which makes me a little bit hesitant. But the fact that he's gone under in six consecutive games now in the first quarter, despite playing, he plays every minute of the first quarter, but seems to be a slow starter when it comes to scoring points. So if you took this bet every game this season, you'd be profitable pretty much because, yeah, Anthony Edwards tends to put it on late, early in the game. Mike Conley runs the offense. They look to feed Rudy Gobert. Even someone like Nas Reed, they try to get him going early. Because if your big switch off early in the game, chances are they don't switch back on. So Anthony Edwards, happy to defer in the first quarter, which is why I'm happy to take his under. Well, that's what I'm considering anyway. But I've got no other props within this game that I love at the moment. Um, so jumping into the last one, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Phoenix Suns, which is going to be a great game. I think Donovan Mitchell's a game-time decision in this one. He was game-time today, then he was ruled out. So I think there's still a possibility he makes this game. Grayson Allen's a game-time decision as well. I think they sat Donovan Mitchell intentionally, knowing it was a back-to-back. He was only going to be able to play one of those games. They sat him today. They didn't need him, saving him for this Phoenix game. So I'm pretty sure he does play based on the articles that I've read. But what I have in this game, there's three players that I don't mind. The very first one I'm looking at is Yusuf Nurkic, under 15.5 points plus assists. Now check out the green on this motherfucking graph. He's gone under in nine of his last 10 games. Averaging 12.4 points plus assists. His last game was against the New Orleans Pelicans. He scored 19 points and he had four assists. They had no answer for him inside. Jonas Valanciunas, the only big that they have. Larry Nance is nothing. Larry Nance is a power forward at best. Whereas the Cleveland Cavaliers, they do have more size. Jared Allen, they got Evan Mobley. I don't know if that PED user Tristan Thompson is still playing, but he could be on there as well. But, yeah, they've got a bit more size to handle someone like Yusuf Nurkic as well. They allow the seventh fewest points and the third fewest assist centers on the season. And if you look at the last time he played them, this was only about three weeks ago. He scored nine points and had zero assists in, in 29 minutes. Over his last 10 games, he's playing 27 minutes a night. So um, I can't see him covering this based off the numbers that I see. Um, there's no major outs, which lead to Yusuf Nurkic having an advantage here. So... I think Cleveland do have enough size to potentially slow Yusuf Nurkic down. So, yeah, that's one lean that I have at the moment. The other I'm looking at is... Who am I looking at? Darius Garland is what I'm looking at. And I'm looking at his first quarter assists. So he's a starting point guard. One and a half is his low line. He's covered in eight of his last 10 games. He's got a great matchup here against the Phoenix Suns. They do allow the 10th most uh, assists to point guards on the season. In head-to-head matchups... He's covered in one of his last two. He had two assists last time against the Phoenix Suns when they played. So recent form, pretty good. I think the only thing I'm a bit worried about is what if Donovan Mitchell does play? So if we look at his last 10 games with Donovan Mitchell, he's covered in seven out of his last 10. Five consecutive games with Donovan Mitchell in the lineup. Darius Garland has covered this assist prop in the first quarter. So I'm not too afraid to take it. Um, And the very last play that I'm considering at the moment, it is... Jared Allen. So speaking of Jared Allen, I was so close to taking his over in his points prop today. It was like five and a half or six and a half. I didn't take it. He scored 13 points or something in the first quarter anyway. Um, But I'm not going to be taking his points prop in the first quarter here against Yusuf Nurkic. But what I am considering taking is his under three and a half rebounds in the first quarter because Yusuf Nurkic is there. So Jared Allen, he's hit the under in eight of his last 10 games for three and a half rebounds. Odds, minus 140. I'll do some line shopping. If I find some good odds, I'll probably take the bet. The Phoenix Suns, they do allow the fewest rebounds to centers on the season because Yusuf Nurkic is an absolute beast. 
So Jared Allen's gone under in eight of his ten, eight of his last ten. Three games against the Phoenix Suns, he's gone under in all three games. And it, like easily, zero, two, and zero. So his line's at three and a half. He's only averaging 2.8 rebounds in his last 10 games. So, and going under in six consecutive games as well. So uh, with Evan Moby back in the lineup, he's someone who can rebound. Max Strews has his good days as well. So, yeah, I'm not minding this. Jared Allen plays 9.4 minutes in the first quarter, quite similar to what he's done against the Phoenix Suns. So, yeah, that's the very last play that I have on my list of leans. So, yeah, it's quite a bit to get through. A lot of players. So I'll make my final picks hopefully soon. Hopefully by the time I uploaded the video and everything, my final picks have been decided on, but don't sweat it. You'll always deliver. There hasn't been a day where I've forgotten to put a pin comment in with my final bets. Um, we also hit the bat today. Two consecutive days hit it in the bat. So I'll put another one of those motherfuckers together. Put down hashtag bat in the comment section if you're going to ride with me. Other than that, lads, if you want to see more of my content, make sure you watch this video. I take you to the back end of what happens when I tell you this is my first set of research. I'm now going to dive a little bit deeper and eliminate some plays and decide my best bets. This video right here, it's going to tell you what I'm doing, what I'm doing between now and the time you see the pinned comments. This video is what it's all about. So I teach you everything end to end. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Sub to the channel because your boy's getting busy. Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney. We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily. It's all free. You don't even have to pay me.